women and girls in science. But of course, ahead of this day, we will be asking ourselves some critical questions. Is there much to celebrate as we get into this particular uh, day in uh, line with bridging the gender divide when it comes to more women and girls in the science subjects? We'll also be asking ourselves the state of affairs here in Rwanda, a country that is actually celebrated widely when it comes to gender equality and women empowerment. We'll also be talking to the players in this particular sector. What are they doing to bridge this gap? And talking of them, we have in the program a very able panel that is actually uh, uh, brought together various uh, stakeholders, and I want uh, to introduce them right here, right about now. We have a student who is Christelle Mazimaka, a high school graduate from Gashora Girls Academy of Science and Technology in Maths, Physics, and Computer Science. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Sure, we understand that uh, you want to take artificial intelligence and uh, national security in your undergraduate class. Yeah, that's true. All the best. Thank you. All right, also with us is a teacher who's Ingabire Muizero, who, uh, who's actually a chemistry teacher at Fawe Girls School in Jisozi. Nine years teaching experience. Thank, Thank you so much for joining us in the program. Thank you. Also with us is none other than Dr. Marie Christine, Quality Development Enhancement Analyst for Applied Sciences in the Higher Education Council. Thank you for joining us in the program. Welcome. Also with us is none other uh, than uh, Dr. Herin Otieno Menya, Director MCF Ames TTP here in Rwanda. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. You have a very big bio, which definitely uh, you'll be sharing with us more about this, especially in your interest in mathematics uh, education uh, that uh, you really uh, hold so dear in your heart. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Now, let's, let's get into this, because we understand that there is a day dedicated every year to celebrate uh, women and girls in science. And I want to start with you right here. Is there any much to celebrate, first of all, in your opinion, when it comes to more women, when you walk around, when you talk to your friends? Do you see something that you can say, wow, there are now more of us in this subject than it has been before? Let's start from there. Yeah, thank you. Um, I believe there is more to celebrate mm -hmm. because um, as a Rwandan girl uh, that has interest in sciences, I believe uh, part, part of having the celebration shows others that... Um, that there is a chance that people do care about we girls being in sciences yeah. and it also gives a motivation to the others mm -hmm. who are already in sciences mm -hmm. and um, well if you do well then you have to celebrate and it's a big uh, improvement that we have made yeah. seeing how many girls do take the sciences yeah. how many girls are interested in taking sciences from high school to colleges yeah. so I think it's something that is very big and dear to our hearts to celebrate as women and as girls yeah. So I think there's, there's much reason to celebrate. Very mm. much. Uh, teacher, because most of the time I see a lot of teachers frustrated when their students are underperforming in sciences in school and they feel so frustrated. They feel like, what is this? And sometimes even for you yourself, when you look at the enrollment, when you see the people interested in taking these sciences uh, from where you sit, do you see there's anything to celebrate uh, in this uh, issue? Yes. There is a very big thing that we have to celebrate on yeah. that day. Uh -huh. Nowadays we have many girls who are doing, not many as we are willing, mm -hmm. but they are there, who are trying to do much better mm -hmm. in the sciences. Mm -hmm. So we have a reason to celebrate. That right. Day. And so talking of many, I would like <laughs> uh, Dr. Marie Christine to share with us. Mm -hmm. When we say many and when we, when we have others who are saying that there are not many, I want us to make some distinction here. Uh, what facts can you be using, for example, to analyze the situation that people say that there is a big gap in, in, in women and girls taking sciences here? Oh, it's true, there are many, but not as many as we like to have. Yeah. Because there has always been that fear of sciences and mathematics. That is not your domain, that is for boys. Mm. Both discouragement from the cultural setup yeah. and then the actual. You know, it is not only in Rwanda, by the way. Mm, mm. Math and science says, oh, I'm not for the domain for women. Mm. Women in the kitchen. Mm. People of, so when you see there are some young girls who are aspiring to be that, yeah. years back it would be unheard of. Yeah. The fact that the, she's not the only, there are many more that are coming out because there had been that uh, encouragement. It's yeah. possible. Mm. So the greatest achievement I would say we need to celebrate. There are many who have listened and said it is workable. Mm. It is possible. Yeah. So we feel there could be as many as possible, in me, like those who have made it, it's as if, oh, we've broken the norms, which is not mm -hmm. the case. Yeah. But if there was something, is everybody could have access to that one, would say, would 
be very much happy. If boys do it, it's nothing strange. Yeah. But when a girl does it, oh, so there is a lot to celebrate yeah. and we encourage men more to come out. We encourage because more. after all, the government is supporting them. Yeah. When you talk about inclusive education, nobody's left behind. Yeah. Yes. Right, that's interesting. And, and Dr. Otiedo, I want to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, is there a crisis? Because some people have been saying the gap is widening. The gap is there. Uh, scientifically speaking, from where you sit, is there a crisis when it comes to this uh, gender divide in women and girls in sciences? No, I don't think there's a crisis. And yeah. as my fellow counterparts have said, we have a student here who is aspiring mm -hmm. to be a scientist. We have a female teacher who is a scientist. And we have Dr. Christine, Marie Christine, who I would say is one of the greatest enthusiasts I've met in this country towards inspiring girls. Yeah. I think it's not a crisis. We have reason to celebrate. We have reason to stop and think and recognize and acknowledge that there's the efforts we are making, good efforts we are making, steps we are making forward. Mm -hmm. But also I think the reason we have the day is not just to celebrate, yeah. is to ask ourselves where are we, yeah. what are we doing well, yeah. what's not working so well, yeah. and what could we do right. to do better. So I will And as you speak about what are we doing and what the situation is, there is actually a chart right here that I want us to just break down because uh, we want to, 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 to have some, some, some scientific facts here. And of course the good news is, is right there. And I want you to just try to walk us through this particular table right here so that we can be able to understand from a fact. A Thank you. And that's the beauty of science. It yeah. helps us make sense of our discussions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so as we're saying, there's good news in Rwanda about girls uh, in science. Yeah. I think what, what that, uh, those graphs are depicting, we basically took um, the performance of girls, I mean, the performance in national examination, O level between 2013 to yeah. 2017. Yeah. And we wanted to look at the distribution. And we looked at the first two grades. And one of the things that we observed is that there's good news. One, we, s we can see that the number of girls doing all level exams have increased. That means more girls are being exposed to science because mm. them being secondary school means they will be learning science. Right. But the other thing that is there for us to celebrate, if you look at the red graph, which is uh, basically the, the number of girls who are getting grade one and two, the top two grades on average across the four sciences, you can see that the red gra uh, graph is increasing. Yeah. So it's getting bigger. That means the number of girls who are getting the top grades has been increasing consistently in the last uh, five years between 2013 and 2017. But, but the rate is not as fast well, or as quick as we would want it to go, right? I guess the, the issue to celebrate is that we're moving in the right direction. And, and, and another thing I need to say is that this is an aggregation of the four sciences. If yeah. you break it down, for example, in chemistry, you'll see that there has been an increase of about 13%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a, that's a good increase in five years. You'll see, for example, that physics and biology is at around 6%, and maths is around 3%, though maths is the best performed. At. So I guess as a country, mm -hmm. we need to sit back and say something is working. Something is something working. Is really working. Right. But having said that, just like as Dr. Christine is saying, we could do better. We could do better. And there's Looking the bad at news it, now. Yes, there's a little bit of bad news. <laughs> yeah. Looking at it at a national level, yeah. you'll realize that the pie is still towards the male. Yeah. You'll find... 66%. Yes. In if you biology. look at biology, chemistry, mathematics, and physics, it's almost at 60 733 yeah. on average. Yeah. So we're still having more boys doing better than our girls. <laughs> so that's why on this day, we're not just looking at what are we doing well. Yeah. We're also going to be serious enough to look at what are not, what's not working that well yeah. and what could we do better. And what can we do better? And of course, we'll be coming back to talk about that, those particular contextual factors. I want to hear your thoughts, first of all. What is making most young girls fear taking the sciences i mean uh, from you what, what really pushed you to to, to to say that i want to take this particular sciences uh, these subjects and in fact pursue it even further and go look at issues of artificial intelligence yeah uh, thank you so i think um as a student um i'm going to talk about perspective of a student yeah uh, i feel like if you're given opportunities if uh, if you're guided to see what what opportunities are out there mm. And if, uh, if you're given career guidance in sciences, if you have, you, you know, there are many opportunities that students should be given at, mm -hmm. girls should be given at, to know, um, to know in what direction to go to. Yeah. Like, personally, I, uh, in my own life, I never thought of sciences, but um, I kept on looking through the internet, having go, um, looking at the Miss Geek mm -hmm. things. You know, those, those are opportunities that open you to see what you're going to do in the future. Mm -hmm and can build your interest right. because uh, you say doctor, being a doctor is hard, um, being um, 
at studying artificial intelligence is, some, is something that is hard, that is meant for boys. But if you see that there is there is nothing different because boys and girls all have the brain. Yeah. But if you see if if um, if girls are given a chance to open up to the opportunities that are out there, mm. because if you show them opportunities that they know, oh yes, I can it do it, there. and he can do it yeah. because the opportunity the opportunity is there for me. Right. So there, I will open up. I will have a growth mindset. I will open up to see what is in the future mm. and what can I. What use of me can it be there right, right. when I take sciences? And, and that, that, let's just pick some key things that you mentioned right there. Uh, a career guidance and showing them that there are opportunities. And when you talk of career guidance, most of these young girls are in these particular schools. They spend more of their time in the schools. And so that means there's a lot of, you know, that the teachers can play in actually guiding them yeah. along the lines that she speaks about. What role are you playing, for instance, from where you sit and how powerful do you think teachers are? in actually guiding these uh, girls in taking these particular subjects? As she mentioned that, students need to be guided. Mm -hmm. Many of the students, they are not aware of the benefits of being scientists. Mm. That's why teachers, as teachers, we do not teach only, we do not deliver only content, yeah. but we only guide them. We guide them, mm. we tell them that the, the benefits of, of, of being a scientist. Mm. So we open their minds. Mm. That's why we involve different techniques mm. when we are teaching, mm. so that we open their minds. Yeah, so that That's they can be able to challenge they themselves. Can be able to. Uh, Dr. Marie, because at the end of the day, young girls have said that we need more role models. If we have more role models, like she says, I'm mm. sure right now she's one uh, a role model for someone who's watching. Mm. Is that a missing link? Do you think that's one of the biggest challenges, that there are no more role models, women and girls in uh, doing sciences? Okay, with the presence of a role model, yeah. it overcomes, you have to overcome obstacles of never, never. Mm -hmm. Because in the process, you can give examples of those who have made it. Not that they made of special substance, but because they had the exposure yeah. and the encouragement, as she <coughs> said. Yeah. Role models are very important because in the process, you see, somebody who's made it, how did she get there? Yeah. That's when career guidance and counseling comes in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because right now, we just completed a boot camp for STEM boot camp for some senior one kids. Mm -hmm. You should have seen. Senior one. Mm -hmm. Senior one going to senior two. Uh -huh. You should have seen the enthusiasm in them. Uh -huh. So with this, you say, you are interested in the, this is what is there, what she was saying. Yeah. Open horizon. Yeah. When you want to be that, like that role model, you need to this subject, this subject, they will lead you to that one. Right. Another thing that's very important, that's making a very big difference, integrated approach. Not mathematics there in the corner, mm. biology there, geography there, no, to show how they are all related. Mm. Moreover, when you talk about this mathematics, we need mathematics, we need English. So when you see where the application, then it helps this youngster. To get there, I need mathematics mm. or statistics. Mm. When I'm doing research in history, mm. Mm. when I'm doing phonetics, mm. you need all of these. So you can see the body of sciences together helping each other. Mm. We are one person, but all these sciences are working in us. Mm. So realistically, you can see science is not something that is dropped from the moon. Mm. It's something we live every day. So what are we doing wrong? Because Irene, in her earlier submissions, she mentioned the bad news. No. Some of the things we're that not we are doing not... wrong now, we're doing <laughs> right. Because <laughs> you can see the product. Right. Mm. Yes. <laughs> So there's nothing wrong that is being done that what we need to fix. What was wrong when doing it was the, uh -huh. we're now in the tunnel towards the light uh -huh. because it works, because uh -huh. he's talking about, a few years back when we talk about artificial intelligence, people say you're crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Artificial intelligence, what for? Yeah. We mm -hmm. don't need that. Where That's do you get it from after all? Yeah. So, but you can see because of the exposure, she has realized, can yeah. integrate this and this one, and there is use uh -huh. for that one. And then with the use of role models, say, oh, it can be worked after all. Uh -huh. So it encourages even up to primary school. Right. Hey, Kids Rene. start aspiring to be that because you are interested in this and this and this. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Erin. Yes, I think, I think it's important that as we look at these statistics, we understand that gender difference is very contextual. Uh -huh. That even if you look at the data from the country, yeah. there are actually districts where the girls are doing better. Yeah in sciences. Yeah. So we need to have that understanding. They are, they are, they are, I mean, we are looking at a, an average of 30 to 40, but if you now break down per district, you'll find a district that has 60% in favor of the girls. Mm. 
But then you'll also find a district that is doing lower than the 30, mm. that is at 20. Mm. Now, the first thing that that tells us is what we've all said here. It has nothing to do with innate capacity. Mm. It has nothing to do with us saying girls are not born to do maths and sciences. Yeah. Because we don't even have to go to the Europe or to go to the Malaysia of the day where girls are doing much better than science. Right in the country, mm. we have districts where girls are actually doing better than boys. So right. that's the first thing. So that tells us that the issues around gender difference in science are very contextual, and we're already intimating to them. Yeah. The first thing, of course, is that issue of, as she mentioned, the growth mindset. That is mm -hmm. something that is very critical, because growth mindset here is about uh, us talking about you are born to do this. Mm -hmm. That is when you're telling people your intelligence is fixed. But when she talks about a growth mindset, you're mm -hmm. talking to the students and making them see intelligence is malleable. Mm -hmm. It's about the strategies you put in place. It's about the efforts you put in place. It's about the exposure and the interest. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I will say is that those are some of the things we need to be looking at and asking ourselves questions. There are things we need to change or to do more yeah. in like, our schools. Like, like what? So because a, Dr. Uh, Marie Christine mentioned that we are not doing anything wrong. No, no, no. What are the things she we need to change? She actually intimated to a number of things. One of the things she talked about was the issue of integrating the learning. And yeah. I will say, if you look at research and yeah. you look at uh, something, why we go to school, we call it in technical terms, achievement, motivation, and goals. Yeah. You'll find that for girls, I mean, for girls, the issue of social goals, why am I doing this? Yeah. What is going to come out from it? Mm. So that issue of when we are teaching sciences, we are able to show what's biology got to do with life, mm. what's mathematics got to do with life, as Dr. Christine was saying, mm. is very important. So the pedagogical practices have mm. to continuously improve, mm. and it is not something that is just about Rwanda. Yeah. It is something that is being honed across the world, right. we might be catching up in certain things, but the fact that there is that improvement, the good news we talked about, yeah. we are obviously in the right direction, but there's more we that can do. That needs to be done. Yeah. So if you look at, um, so, so that's what we're talking about, but so the issue for us, for example, at AIMS as a lead program, what our program is about, and actually I would say the program is a fusion of the vision of two organizations. So for African Institute of Mathematical Sciences, we believe all learners should have equal access yeah. to math and science, quality math and science education. But also Mastercard Foundation believes their vision of every person having equal access to learning and prosperity. Yeah. So in their program, which is the Leaders in Teaching mm. Initiative uh, program for the Mastercard Foundation, which is what we're implementing together as African Institute of Mathematical Sciences, yeah. we believe there's a role teachers have to play. Yeah. We believe that if we improve our training, if we motivate our teachers better, if we provide continuous access to continuous professional development so yeah. that we can improve our teaching practices, those factors could, in, I mean, could help improve performance for both boys and girls. Mm. And I will give an example. So last um, term, we had an activity with schools in Kayumbo, four mm. schools mm. in the whole sector. Mm. And one of the things that you were trying to propagate, which is actually very important for the girl child, is trying to promote a collaborative learning environment. Mm -hmm. Generally, the girls tend to work better in a nurturing environment, yeah. an environment mm -hmm. that is not too competitive. It's nurturing emotionally and, and cognitively. Mm -hmm. And I think what we have there is a little bit of a snapshot when we looked at what happened the time before the intervention yeah. and the time after the intervention. Mm -hmm. We saw that generally there was an improvement for both girls and boys. But what we saw was that there was an indication that the girls seemed to have improved marginally more than the boys, mm. confirming the research evidence that is there that part of what we need to do mm. is to make our learning environment more socially mm. comfortable for our girls. Mm. Mm. And gender collaboration, ensure there is affect. We always tell our teachers yeah. a joke, smile. Yeah. Mm. The simple thing of you teaching science Smile. Yeah. Put life into it. The so it doesn't look like it is. It is sense. one of those. It's a beast. It's a monster. It's not a beast. It's yeah. not a monster. It's fun. It, yeah. it, 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 it impacts our life across. Whether you're talking about entertainment yeah. or you're talking about artificial intelligence, there's a dimension mm -hmm. of science. So one of the things we talk about is that issue of affect. Yeah. The other thing that is also very important that I think we have talked about is it's not just a teacher issue. Yeah. The socialization of girls happen both in school and at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have to find creative ways of, cre of changing the narrative mm -hmm. around maths and science in our schools mm -hmm. and at home. And any intervention that is about bridging this gap has to, do, I mean, has to touch on those areas mm -hmm. in an integrated way, not in isolated. Not Today we're dealing with parents. Yeah. Tomorrow we're dealing with, with, with teachers. The final thing I will say that is also very important and sometimes we don't talk about is the assessment practices. Yeah. 
So our assessment, especially the feedback process, it doesn't help to tell a student you are an 80% student or you are a 20% student. Mm. Our feedback needs to be more formative mm. because it affects that sense of self-efficacy. If you tell a student you're an E or a grade 9 student, mm. especially the girls are a little more sensitive in terms of their identity. But those are the marks that you've worked for. So the and issue, the got... issue, no, you're no. wrong because no. perhaps what you are seeing in my results is yeah. not necessarily what I work for. There are things that happen even during exams. Right. But most importantly, if you tell me my child is an A student or a B student, what does, how does that help me? Mm -hmm. But if we can make our feedback more formative and say, mm -hmm. look, you've done very well in answering the questions about the body, yeah. but you seem to be struggling with the questions about the cell. Mm -hmm. So this child knows that part I'm doing well. Yeah. This part is I where I need to focus. Right. So assessment practices will also need to improve mm -hmm. as part of ways of trying to bridge the gap. Right. And I want to hear from Crystal yeah, uh, uh, here, uh, because at the end of the day, we're being told that uh, the way science is taught to young school children could actually ignite an interest in science that might help to address this gender gap in future. What is it that you think, um, or, or from your own experience, uh, back in school, that you've been witnessing that you think should be changed in the way sciences are taught in our schools here in Rwanda? Yeah, as I was just hearing just said about the assessments. Yeah. And um, so what I think and what I have recognized is that um, just telling a student that math is good, mm -hmm. physics is good, is going to help you in life, mm -hmm. that does not help the student actually because they say, oh, okay, I'm just going to do this to have a better life. But um, if you show them how if they're in senior five or they're just going to graduate in senior six mm. and tell them, you know, you can, you can take this in college, you can do this, you can have, you can have these other courses. So showing a student that um, if, you have, you, if you want to be a pilot, mm. you can take physics, math, and geography. That mm. is a science. Mm. But um, if you want to be, as, as they've said, uh, there was a STEM program yeah. they mm. had with the senior Good ones. Mm. So mm. starting from there down, they w when they reach in, in senior three doing the national exam, their dream won't be crushed because mm -hmm. they know I can do it mm -hmm. since since senior one. So having having the students take their assessment according to where they're not doing best, mm -hmm. because I believe there's nothing wrong with doing, mm -hmm. but we just need to improve, put in more effort to what is happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So having assessments to the students, having uh, telling their parents, um, like like from our school, they, there is um, at Gashara, they give you the grades and don't say you're number one, you're number last mm. in class. Because mm. that, it, it's going to make the student compare themselves. With the ones who have gotten the With the A's. ones who have gotten so how are they number grading one. You? No, they give you the grades, yeah. but you, you don't know at the, any other person's yeah. grades unless yeah. they tell you. Yeah. But they don't say, oh, you're number one, you're number two, you're number last in the class. Mm. That does not happen because it does not help the student grow. Mm. So to help you to grow is that you know you have to work better. Mm. If, if that's the end limit of how you're working, then use another method mm. because you know you're not, you have not got an A, yeah. you have got a C, yeah. and uh, that's not, you want an A actually. Right. So it helps you assess yourself, teachers assess you, and parents assess you. Right. But there's no need to compare because uh, another thing is that um, comparison, like uh, where I said it all level, like, you know, grading systems are different in different schools. Mm. But letting a student compare themselves is also also brings them down emotionally and physically. They say, oh, I cannot do it. I've mm. tried it so many times. Yeah. But giving them uh, an opportunity of assessing themselves, mm. having teachers talk to them, mm. and not comparing themselves to the others, yeah. that's something that can help it students. It can be able to change the way things happen. But let's talk about the reality on the ground that we see. This is the, the, the wish, the dream, how we would like things to be. But let's now talk about how they are uh, as we speak today, probably from your perspective, to make us understand why things are done the way they are done. We have schools where you would uh, have the maths teacher or the sciences teacher coming in and says, you know, it's time for cut, continuous assessment <laughs> test, pass mark is 60. If you fail 60, everybody, you know, you, 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 you know yourself, the kind of punishment you're going to have. How is this making things even more difficult to bridge this gender gap. And why do teachers have that mentality? I'm not trying to say you do, but probably you can explain to us from your peers, the way you exchange ideas on this. Most of the time, all of us, we are the fruit of where we are coming from. Uh -huh. If I have experienced something, sometimes I find myself committing the same mistake uh -huh. unwillingly. Uh -huh. But I think another thing that we should do uh -huh. as teachers, we should uh, guide our students, 
allow them to learn using different opportunities. Mm. Many of the teachers have this kind of stand, just standing and lecturing mm. Mm. instead of allowing students to play important parts during mm. the learning process. I think that the best thing that we can do is this thing of involving mm. too much activities so that learners can be involved in the learning. Yeah. Provide different opportunities mm. to, to, to learners. But teachers have been blamed on punishing those who actually fail. If you don't get that particular mark, but Jeff, you I get mean, your and, kiboko. And Eugene, we have, to also, <laughs> we have to also, I mean, understand the teachers also function within a context. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are policies that guide the approach that teachers uh, use in class or what they pay attention mm -hmm. to. So I think uh, part of what we have to look at is holistic view of this. One, mm -hmm. our teachers, as, 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 as teacher Sylvia said, yeah. part of what they do is what, what they came, where they came from. Mm. Yeah. So that's the way I was taught. Mm. That's yeah, the way I'm going to teach. So, so, so one, we need to ask ourselves, how do we uh, take our teachers through a process to undo those beliefs and attitudes that they have towards teaching that perhaps mm. they observed in them days? Mm. But we also need to ask ourselves very serious questions, those of us who are charged with the responsibility mm. of training teachers. Mm. Because sometimes there are situations where we tell teachers, you need to be make the learning student centered mm -hmm. but we are actually lecturing them as mm -hmm. teachers so mm -hmm. you are teaching a teacher quote unquote mm -hmm. through teacher centered learning mm -hmm. but you are telling them when you go back to class i want you to be to use learner centered mm -hmm. so so there, there's an aspect to that but there's also the aspect of policy when i come to evaluate the teacher what am i demanding of the teacher mm -hmm. am i asking the teacher how many a's did your class get uh -huh. am i asking the teacher um how much of the syllabus have you covered? Which are critical questions, mm. but how do we do that in a way that the teacher doesn't feel mm. the only thing I need to do is to check the box that I've taught topic A, yeah. topic mm. B, yeah. and the only thing I need to do is whatever it takes, whether it means being harsh to get the A's. And the problem with that sometimes, you'll find teachers perhaps concentrating on the brighter students mm. that quote-unquote will give them the A's mm. and forgetting everybody else that they think it's not going to make any meaningful impact in what I'm doing. So I think we have to agree that, yes, our teachers, there's something they need to improve, and I believe they have a persuasion, yeah. and they have an interest to improve. I have worked with teachers in this country for the last six months, and I would say I have the, the most motivated team of teachers that yeah. I would... I mean, any time we talk about we need to do this, I know teachers who've taken time to hold math camps or math activities in the village mm. during holiday when yeah. they're supposed to be resting. Right. I know teachers who've gone to Omuganda and mm. talked to parents about you need to support your kids better in learning math and science. Mm. So I guess as we expand this environment and help our teachers see things can be done differently and do it in a way that they feel empowered, we are not talking down at them. Yeah. Mm. We're giving them opportunity to also bring out what are the difficulties they are facing so that together. And one of the things, of course, is what I've learned is that because it's a policy issue, Bring the teacher on board, bring the head teacher on board, right. and That's bring it. the director of studies on board. Yeah. Because, so the whole community, so it's an ecological perspective of looking at things, mm -hmm. because then you bring the parent on board. Right. When we're doing this intervention, I mean, we had teachers who made the students, because we have to agree, our, not all our students have the same opportunity. We need mm -hmm. to ask ourselves, why are some districts doing better mm -hmm. than other districts? There are a number of factors. Some mm -hmm. of it is socioeconomic, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the other is also the opportunities. We have day scholars. Mm. We talk to girls who told us, well, you've given me a maths exercise book. You're encouraging me to do some five extra sums mm. every day I go home because mm. the engagement is important. But I, when I get home, I have to do chores. Mm. By the time I finish, it's too dark. And I can't be able I can't, to concentrate. I can't be able to do it. So yeah. all those are realistic factors that we have to pay attention to and work on gradually. Right. And together, right. and we're surely going to see a change. Right. Mm -hmm. I want us to take a very short break. Uh, just a very short break. I wanted to hold that particular thought, and we're going to come back to look at how do we actually incorporate all this and actually formulate a way forward. Because at the end of the day, we need to fix this. We all mm -hmm. agree there's a gap, mm -hmm. but we need to fix it. And how we fix it is what we'll talk about when we come back from the break. Right. We're going to take a very short break right about now. And of course, we'll be coming back to keep this conversation going. Women and girls in science bridging that particular gap is our point of focus so keep talking to us and when we come back we'll be moving this conversation forward so stay with us
right, welcome back. Thank you so much for being with us. We are talking about women and girls in science and how we can bridge that particular gap. Talk to us. Tell us your thoughts on what you think are the possible solutions to this particular issue. First of all, do you agree there's actually a gap and how do we fix it? We'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And I want us to bring back our panelists right here on the program. Uh, Dr. Marie Christine, when we, when we were going for the break, you wanted to jump in. And I wanted you to just give us the clear picture of how then, from where you sit at the Higher Education Council, you could pick all these items in trying to start formulating the way forward. Where are we at in fixing this particular issue of this gender gap? Okay, before you fix it, I want to give an answer to the question you put uh, before. Yeah. You, went, you said the teacher is there, you said at the beginning, uh -huh. last mark is this, mm -hmm. you're going to do the Already you have put the people in tension, they can't concentrate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i give you a good example. You have watched athletics. When you put runners, they are ready. If you start threatening them, by that when you put when you fired for them to go, they are few that will make the others will collapse. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't take attention the same way. That is when she's talking about mm -hmm. learner centeredness. Yeah. You put a person in a most conducive environment to receive, most receptive. Mm -hmm. Learning you're supposed to be benefiting from that. And when you talk about learner centeredness, you allow to a communication. Instead of the traditional way it was like sending projectiles. One mm -hmm. the teacher said get it. Teacher said, you get the feedback. So in this way, you are improving communication because learning is communication mm. conducive. Mm. You get the immediate feedback. But when you talked about this type, it is like uh, this summative type of assessment. Yeah. We talked about um, formative, gradual, building confidence. Instead of waiting there with uh, an axe, yeah. because you are going to make it. The, you, you discourage them already. Right. So, so, so from the higher so education, from the council education council point council, of view, how are you fixing? Oh, what we're fixing? E yes. You see, our system, all education, they are related. Uh -huh. Because the higher education council from the universities, they are the ones who train the teachers will go there. They are the ones who will get the product of the secondary school. Mm. So even go up to pre-primary, mm. they are all supposed to be related. You're supposed to be providing policies that make it possible for learning. Mm. So that one phase leading to the other one smoothly. So by the end of it, the policies that have been formulated are based on research that has been carried out. What are obstacles at this level? Mm. How, do they, how do we overcome them? Mm. That's what we talk about quality assurance. So that in the process, the product of the higher education, high learning institution, are the ones who are going to make the changes we want in the education system. Mm. So it is being monitored gradually so that the quality that you want. No, another thing that's very important, the importance of research. Mm. Culture is very important in research. So when the people are doing the research at this level, you the assumptions that are made, and then by the end of it, for your hypothesis, mm. you're supposed to be solving this. By the end of it, you say, mm. Mm. the policy is supposed to be answering the question that be to facilitate, the, to clear the way, mm. obstacles which may be culture-based, and others that may be coming there, right. so that the environment is conducive for the person to move forward. To move yes. ahead on that. And before I, coming, let, yeah, let's just I bring fast the, 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 the teacher yeah, fast of all, teacher. because at the end of the day, uh, I, I want to hear, because uh, some people have argued, even the way uh, we teach these science subjects is a problem in, in its own way. Mm. It makes people perceive them as tough and hard, uh, you know, monsters that mm. we need to actually slay. And, and, and so I want to hear your thoughts on what are the already interventions that are already happening from where you sit in actually making mathematics look more beautiful, uh, nice, easy, you know. The simplest technique that we are using, as Dr. Irene mentioned, mm -hmm. it's smiling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Traditionally, yeah. we used to stand in front of students having a gloomy face. Uh -huh. That face cannot motivate our learners to learn. So we have to smile. Mm -hmm showing them that what we are teaching them, it is something important. Mm. There's nothing selling that has to scare them. Mm. And another technique that we are using, it is involving too much practicals, mm. not using too much theories, mm. involving practicals so that they can see that what we are mm. telling them, mm. they exist. Mm. Another technique is these things of using project-based project, project based learning. Yeah. So while they are, they are learning, but they have to look for some problems that their society is facing and try to use sciences that they are learning mm. to solve those problems mm. that they are, they are... So they can relate with what they are learning 
in their own real day-to-day -day life. Problem, mm. problem solving approach. Yes, problem yes. solving approach. And so uh, some people uh, have been arguing that uh, the, the challenge with this science subjects that, and the way we are being taught in school is because we're being taught things we can't even apply in our real day-to-day -day life. Some people will tell you way back that we did titration in, in, in chemistry, for example, and today I ask where am I going to apply this? And so it demotivates people from even having an interest in these things. Uh, how significant is what uh, Malimu, the teacher here, says in, in, in actually encouraging more women and girls uh, to, to, to follow or pursue these subjects and not take something that they'll be told this is the easier channel because this is what you relate with in your life? So, um... So uh, currently we are having the CBC curriculum, the computer-based curriculum. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's where you're given projects, go work on them, mm -hmm. and come back with a solution. Mm -hmm. And um, as you said, there's things that we learn and we don't find them anywhere. But if if the teacher knows and um, and if the teachers know how to guide the students, you see, you learn titration. When you go to university, you might uh, be interested <coughs> in taking, uh, I don't know, chemical, I did do chemistry, mm. maybe chemical engineering, and you need this titration you've learned in high school mm. to solve a problem in university. Mm. So you have shown the student that you've learned it here. It's not something that is useless. Mm. When you go to college, you, you will be needed or you will you'll be required to have to have learned this course mm. or to have to know this certain solution. So um, teaching students things that are just there, not showing them um, what use of it is it going to be in the future or tomorrow. Mm. That's something that um, that may discourage students mm. to take to uh, to move on. Mm. So another thing is um, schools have different resources yeah. and they're in different districts. They have different opportunities. Yeah. So um, I think uh, if, if we're moving to the social economic aspect, uh, it, it does not require a teacher to, to be somebody that is economically, economically stable mm. to make the student understand, mm. or the school does not need to be that economically stable to make the student understand. Mm. We, we, can, you, uh, we, we know people from, um, from the villages that have created airplanes from, the, from these small crafts, yeah. From uh, from the um, from their gardens, yeah. we know students that, that have had so many solutions. So, despite their challenges economically, they can still be able to. They can them. still be able to make it if given the chance. If given mm. the chance, right. and opened opened their thoughts and minds. Right. Mm. Yeah. Perfect. And, and I think I think what she has said, which is really important for us as teachers, is as we go towards ladder centered, as we're thinking mm. about girls, two things that one of them is Dr. Christine said: culture is a very important part of learning. Mm. And we must appreciate that different girls will engage with learner-centered differently. Mm -hmm. And we have to be conscious of that. Mm -hmm. A student who's coming perhaps from an environment at home where <coughs> she's exposed to engaging and talking and all that might really be able to plug in immediately and take advantage of that environment. Mm -hmm. A student who's coming from a cultural background where she has been trained to keep quiet mm -hmm. until she's mm -hmm. spoken to, mm -hmm. coming into a learner-centered class might actually not benefit. Mm -hmm. so so that issue of differentiation and knowing the contextual factor so that mm. I know that that girl might not speak if I, if I just ask her. I need to bring her up. Mm. I need to find a way of getting her to contribute. So, those, so that we know that when we're training teachers, we yeah. have to be aware of those differences mm. and integrate it in our teaching because sometimes the training also is too uniform in thinking. Mm -hmm. You need to go and use learner-centered. Mm. You need to go and use... ICT. There are schools in this country perhaps that cannot use ICT. Mm. But there's something Crystal has said. The issue of making learning connected to real life and mm. ensuring mm. that you're not using an example that the child can't connect to. Because I could bring a very good simulation mm. talking about a game park mm. or, or, or skating, yeah. but that child has never seen skating. So teachers being made to find ways of breaking down the science concepts to connect to what's happening right. immediately yeah. mm. around. So we have to keep differentiating depending mm. on our context. Mm. That's really critical. That will be critical. That's really, really mm. critical. And then, of course, the fact that this has policy implications. How do we ensure? Because research has shown that school poverty has a greater impact on the student's outcome of learning mm. than home poverty. Mm. Because I can come from a poor background, but if I'm taken to a good school learning environment with resources, with supportive learning environment, I can break the ceiling. Right. So that against 
point back some responsibility to to, to us policymakers to keep working towards trying to standardize and ensure that every student has equal access and to ensure the training tech cognizance of the situations on the ground. Right. But I think one of the things that we have to say and make the, uh, the, the girls know, science is, not, science is not supposed to necessarily be easy because nothing in life that is worth doing is supposed to be easy. Mm -hmm. It being tough should not be the thing that pushes me away from science, mm -hmm. but the makeup I always tell people, I did mathematics. Um, I found myself doing aspects to do with sociology and planning. Mm -hmm. I am now doing something to, to do with teaching. And I always celebrate the fact that part of it is my training in science because mm -hmm. the main thing is the software. Mm -hmm. Science is supposed to teach you to be a problem solver mm -hmm. so that wherever you find yourself, you can actually engage. You, you are not uh, intimidated by solving problems. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think part of what we have to do in our teaching is to begin teaching the, the software aspect. So if I'm teaching maths, it's not so much the X and the Y, mm -hmm. because people will say, where am I going to use X and yeah, Y? Yeah. But it's that training of using coming from unknown to known, yeah. mm -hmm. that in whether you'll find yourself wherever. And just to answer the question of that person who might say titration, where do yeah. I use it mm -hmm. in life? Actually, when we ladies go to the saloon and make our hair using chemical, that's actually it's that process of titration. There's mm. that issue of acid and base. Yeah. Mm. So that we use science every, every day. day. Yeah. And bringing that excitement to class, real practical things are happening in our everyday life, is continuously part of what you're going to be empowering our teachers yeah. to do. And I know the teachers are willing. Mm. The teachers are really willing. They're willing. Yeah. Dr. Mary Christine, we've talked about the issue of competitiveness and mm. why it might be a reason to dismotivate some people who feel that uh, they are not actually performing compared to uh, the rest of the, of the class. But so some people have argued that uh, do we need them to have deliberate rules that actually you know, make it easier uh, and, and, and more lenient for girls in, in, in school so that we can encourage more of them? I mean, would this be part of what you would be suggesting? Uh, because we've seen, for example, in political systems where we've had the quarter system where, you know, already we, we, we are giving uh, a head start because we know that the, the challenges might not be the same for boys and girls. So is this what we need to, to solve this gender gap? Actually, when to talk about solving the gender gap, Sometimes we are limited by facilities, mm. opportunities. Mm. Well, if we had uh, universities, as you mentioned, infrastructure is very important, mm. so that we take everybody there. Mm. But you've got limited facilities. Yeah. Those limited facilities is like a funnel. Yeah. Only those we can, which can pass through, that's through examination, unfortunately. Mm. Mm. So in those related to, we talked about quota system, well, how many places capacity of an institution to accept them mm. so that they'll be given equal opportunity to go on. Mm. That's what will be limited. Right. Otherwise, well, evaluation, our system of evaluation, sometimes it becomes very, and that is because it is related to what is there beyond, because you cannot have everybody 100% mm. to go there. Right. You need to take the top So we should not say that girls will be graded this way because we understand they have challenges. So if, no. if the A is from 60, for girls will no, make no, it from No, no, that's not what that's we're saying. Right. Because yeah. remember, no, we said we don't have an innate problem. We're yeah. not saying girls don't have the brains uh -huh. to do science. Uh -huh. What we're saying is the environment, uh -huh. that a girl child will function better in an environment that is more emotionally nurturing. Right. And one of the things are simple strategies. One of the strategies is, for example, increasing space for peer teaching and learning. Uh -huh. Because mm -hmm. girls tend to confer with one another. They want to ask help. That's the key word. Is there an environment that if, as a girl, I know I have not understood, I, I know I can follow you mm -hmm. as a teacher mm -hmm. and ask you. And that's why she was saying, smile. Because mm -hmm. if you're smiling in class, mm -hmm. I might not find it too difficult to follow you after class and say, Madam, mm -hmm. I didn't understand this part. But mm -hmm. if you were this lion in class, mm -hmm. that might be a problem. <laughs> but most importantly, at an adolescent level, peer learning is one of the key factors. So the question is, for example, is there time that has been created for, for, for students to work amongst themselves? Yeah. In most cases, that's not the case. It's, mm -hmm. it's, by, uh, it's, it's not structured. It's taken that for granted. But especially for the students who are day scholars, because who are, those who are boarders might have their own time because mm -hmm. they're here. Mm -hmm. But those who are day scholars, they are going home, they are in class from morning to evening, and mm -hmm. they're being taught, and teaching is not learning. Right. So some of the things we're doing with the schools, so I'll say, for example, in Kayumbo, this year, for example, they have agreed as a sector to create a science hour, one hour a week, 
where it is time for peer teaching, peer learning. It's a relaxed environment where we come, can we investigate, exchange ideas. We exchange ideas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Teachers can come and provide. Those are the things we are talking about. So teachers about. from different schools cross-pollinate. So now, because they have put the hour at the same time, yeah. there's opportunity for cross-pollination, there's opportunity for, for collaboration. But even within the school, there's time where students really know I can just go, I'm an S1 student, mm. and can go to an S3 student mm. and say, hey, because when you talk to students, I will tell you, sometimes my peers are able to explain it better than the mm. teacher mm. because they understand me. They'll yeah. speak it yeah. in my language. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that we need to start. We are starting to continue, uh, make the teachers understand, mm. and it calls for policy decisions mm. to say, let's make the environment a little more nurturing. Let's tap into the fact that these students, at adolescent level especially, they gain if we give them opportunity to teach each other right. and learn from one another. But right. we're not saying girls need to be given special grades because right. some districts, the girls are doing better than the boys. So are we going to make the grades different? In right. so not at all. Yeah. What is it that you want as a teacher, for example, from where you sit? And when you talk to peer, your peers, uh, what do they tell you that they need that would even make them more motivated to actually encourage even more girls to join the science subjects? Many of the girls that we are having at school they prefer to be taught by, 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 by female. Uh -huh. Many of the teacher, science teachers are mostly male teachers. Uh -huh. I'm the only one who is teaching science uh -huh. there. Uh -huh. And you, I find myself being guiding different students from different, different classrooms. Right. So I, I feel that girls, they feel okay when they are talking with a female teacher. Mm. So she needs to actually come and support you. <laughs> She was in my student too. And she can also now start come and, and teach on extra time. So, so you need more female uh, more science female teachers science. so they can be able to relate and talk. Uh, but but uh, is it possible? Because we can choose who our teachers but, are going to be. Uh, it's not possible. But yeah. at some time, let's not generalize that they only get on well with... Female teachers. Yeah, because they, uh, there is... Uh, I mean, some, f starting from the background... I know of a girl who did so well. I think I told you about her, this yes. nun from Kenya. Yes. A nun, a nun, mm. religious nun. Mm. And very proud of being a nun, because mm. in her time, whatever, she's a nuclear physicist. Okay. She said she was motivated by a male teacher mm. because he was patient. So mm. passion can make a difference. So this it doesn't matter if it's a male or a female teacher, it's just a passion. It depends on how yeah. the, that teacher is teaching. delivers. Mm. Mm. If so that issue of relationship, mm. Yes. Creating a sense of relationship, whether male or female, mm. is very important. Mm. Because there's something she talked about, academic emotions. Mm. There's a whole aspect of looking at academic emotion, the sense of anxiety, there's even anger, enjoyment. That has a key contribution to the, to the learning and the, actually even the cognitive processes. Mm. Mm. So the teachers, whether male or female, mm. should be trained to be conscious of that and mm. to create an emotionally and nurturing environment. Right. The boys in the class need to be trained to, to be able to create a supportive environment so that the girls don't stand up when they're talking and the boys are either calling names mm. or cat calling mm. or whistling because I know as a student I faced that when I was at mm. university. Mm. So we need to create class norms mm. and school norms mm. that are actually all of us are working together to create an enabling environment mm. for the girls mm. and also for the boys eventually. But the challenge is we have actually created this mentality of competition that uh, I know as a man or as a boy in that class, a lady is not supposed to beat me yes. in this in this exam. Mm. And so how do we actually make them be supportive if when they are it, feeling we embarrassed? If, if we're we saying girls beat the boys in this, and then when they go back home, they're told, you were beaten by a girl. Humiliation. That is humiliation. Yes. When we're yes. supposed to be encouraging them. That is what there is a term called gender responsive pedagogy mm -hmm. right. which raises both boys, boys and, and girls. girls even at home yeah. your father brings the children boys both both boys and girls in his home right in other words take the same attitude because in this process we help to overcome mindsets right. mm -hmm. because mindsets are very big obstacles to advancement we have only five minutes to go and i want to take this opportunity to just talk about the opportunities that are there we are a country that already even has an ICT master plan, Smart Rwanda master plan, meaning that for those who are going to join this particular sciences, there are opportunities in there. And I want you to speak to them right now. Why do you believe that joining or working around science subjects brings about opportunities? What, what sort of things that you can share with young people who are watching you right now, especially girls? Um, so oh, when we talk about women in STEM, mm -hmm. um, I know some people that have not taken science courses in their classes, but they still have 
IT related projects mm. outside the class. Yeah. They have business at, at using IT. So if if you not take if you not have a chance to take sciences yeah. in uh, in your high school or university, it's not late for you in whatever work you're doing to involve in ICT mm. or any other science uh, related, related subject. subjects it's original or thing, yeah. yeah. So uh, for those who who want to take the the science course path, but they do not see the ways to do it. Um, number one, as I said, we have the competence-based mm. curriculum, and that is to build project solving. Mm. And having that project solving itself, you so you to solve a problem means that you have involved in some scientific strategies to solve a problem. Mm. And there's what we call um, in, um, emotional intelligence. Mm. So you coming around a way to to do with to deal with an issue in the community to deal with an issue in class, mm. to deal in an issue that is in the country. Mm. So you find pride in solving challenges around you. That, that gives you that moral satisfaction from where you say yeah. pride. So um, you being in class and studying physics is not enough for yeah. you to, to be a scient, to be a scientific person. Uh -huh. So the way you're going to use the physics, the way you're going to use mm. things at home, things in your garden, things that are around the community, um, um, people, uh, there's a certain young kid that designed convention center out of the mud mm -hmm. or that used a radio out of things that are small. Mm -hmm. He's just a kid, but he's using sciences. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that shapes you in, you have resources at home and that is an opportunity. Right. If you're able to do that, then that is an opportunity. We have K-Lab, we have Fab Lab, we have Miss Geek. We have a lot of um, organizations that want the youth to get involved. Mm. If you do not take a science course, then go for it. They, they give trainings. It's never too late. It's never too late <laughs> to, right. to, do for, to go for science. Right. Very briefly, your closing remarks. How do we bridge this gap from where you sit? Normally, I think that these policymakers, mm. they are the one to, to do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Because teachers and the students, we are, we are following mm -hmm. what is there structured. Some of the things that should be done is to, ch to train teachers, change the way they teach. Mm. Teachers should be enthusiastic. Mm. Teachers, they should show their learners that they, are, they like what they, they are teaching them. Right. And this passion should be contagious, if I can say. Right. That's the, the only thing That's that the I can say. That's the only thing that can be done. Even the 10%. And, and the last one, and the last one, the world should know that female are able mm. as male are yeah. able it's possible so. yeah okay what do we do moving on what we do is uh, policy makers but policy makers based on what is on the ground mm. Mm. so there should be communication yeah. so that policy implementers that, that, that communication co is not there yeah mm -hmm. the communication should be so, so that improve. that is a big gap mm. so that it would be easy flow of information from policy makers to implementers mm. so mm. that if it doesn't to give the feedback mm. for improvement mm. so that whatever doesn't work you look for alternative instead of having to reach it has got to be that mm. that's not the way to advance because otherwise if you meet obstacles the aim is to have everybody overcome that to get better. Mm. Mm. But if you have got uh, the, the I mean, without changing, for example, all the policies, that is what we talk about innovations. Mm. What worked yesterday will not work today, yeah. mm. not work tomorrow. So you need to keep, keep evaluating innovating. feedback so that you improve as you go ahead. Right. So you're going to be talking to each other. Yes, this is a commitment. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Erin, what are you committing from AIMS to do? in solving this particular issue? Well, well that's uh, as AIMS through the AIMS TTT program, which as I, say, as I said is part of the LEAT program of MasterCard Foundation. That's yeah. what we are committed yeah. to do. Yeah. Part of what you're committed to do and we already began doing is the issue of gender responsive pedagogy, yeah. making teachers, working with teachers to improve their teaching practices to yeah. be more gender responsive. We're working at looking at public engagements yeah. so that the conversation can go beyond the school walls or classroom mm -hmm. walls and bring the other players. And most importantly also, we're looking at resourcing and evidence gathering for mm. policy dialogue yeah. so that there is that loop it's 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 it's, it's a continuous loop yeah. that can we're looking at what's happening in class we are feedbacking to the policy makers yeah. we're creating platforms for those dialogues to happen mm. and in the process we believe the policies are going to change but i want to say this my shout out is to the teachers yeah. the teachers are willing and they are ready i know 
the context of this discussion was the International Day yeah. for Girls and Women in yeah. Science. And the theme for this year is investing in women and girls in science for an inclusive growth. Mm. I think this is the first time that the country, especially within the context of the schools, will be doing something to celebrate it. And I will tell you, there are many teachers who are already planning small-scale activities mm. in their schools, mm in their community to mark this day, to yeah. mark this day. Yeah. even though i mean the teacher said my, my, my head teacher doesn't understand what it is yeah. mm -hmm. but i want to explain explain yeah. it yeah. and the good thing is these are their initiative and that's what we have to do not us doing it but motivating the teachers the students the parents mm -hmm. to play the role mm -hmm. and i believe we are on the right path yes, you right. can yeah. also just squeeze it really fast because they're doing yes. yeah, well, it's true. Yes. you talked about this uh, international day that's going to be celebrated yes in Rwanda, it will be the first time, but worldwide, it will be the fourth time to show yeah. this is something that is still new. It's growing as well. Because it is being realized, it is needed. Right, mm. it is yes. needed. Of course, thank you so much for making time to speak to us on this very important issue. We will keep talking about these things. The more we talk about them, the more we try to find more solutions and also diversify in how we actually fix this problem. Thank you for making time to speak to us. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank All right, thank you also for making time to watch this particular program. As we've said here, the conversation ends on these four walls. But it has to go on from where you are. Keep asking yourselves those tough questions. What do we do to actually bring in more women and girls in this science subjects? Of course, my name as always is Eugene Anangwe.